JavaScript Promises Introduction In web development, asynchronous programming is notorious for being a challenging topic. An asynchronous operation is one that allows the computer to move on to other tasks while waiting for the asynchronous operation to complete. Asynchronous programming means that time-consuming operations don't have to bring everything else in our programs to a halt. There are countless examples of asynchronicity in our everyday lives. Cleaning our house, for example, involves asynchronous operations such as a dishwasher washing our dishes or a washing machine washing our clothes. While we wait on the completion of those operations, we're free to do other chores. Similarly, web development makes use of asynchronous operations. Operations like making a network request or querying a database can be time consuming, but JavaScript allows us to execute other tasks while awaiting their completion. This lesson will teach you how modern JavaScript handles asynchronicity using the promise object introduced with ES6. Let's get started. What is a promise? Promises are objects that represent the eventual outcome of an asynchronous operation. A promise object can be in one of three states. One would be pending, the initial state. The operation has not yet completed. Another would be fulfilled. The operation has completed successfully and the promise now has a resolved value. For example, a request promise might resolve with a JSON object as its value. And a third one is rejected. The operation has failed and the promise has a reason for the failure. This reason is usually an error of some kind. We refer to a promise as settled if it is no longer pending. It is either fulfilled or rejected. Let's think of a dishwasher as having the states of a promise. It would have a pending state. The dishwasher is running but has not completed the washing cycle, a fulfilled state. The dishwasher has completed the washing cycle and is full of clean dishes, the rejected state. The dishwasher encountered a problem. It didn't receive soap and returns unclean dishes. If our dishwashing promise is fulfilled, we'll be able to perform related tasks, such as unloading the clean dishes from the dishwasher. If it's rejected, we can take alternative steps, such as running it again with soap or washing the dishes by hand. All promises eventually settle, enabling us to write logic for what to do if the promise fulfills or if it rejects. Instructions. Observe the diagram on the right. Here we illustrate the different possible states of a dishwashing promise. And it is just showing exactly what it said. The error for no soap, uh, and that's the rejected, and the resolve is the clean dishes one. Let's move on to the next lesson. Constructing a promise object. Let's construct a promise. To create a new promise object, we use the new keyword and the promise constructor method. Const executor function equals resolve comma reject fat arrow function to an to a body but there's nothing in it yet and then there's const my first promise equals new promise and it passes in the executor function. The promise constructor method takes a function parameter called the executor function which runs automatically when the constructor is called. The executor function generally starts an asynchronous operation and dictates how the promise should be settled. The executor function has two function parameters, usually referred to as the resolve and reject functions. The resolve and reject functions aren't defined by the programmer. When the promise constructor runs, JavaScript will pass its own resolve and reject functions into the executor function. Resolve is a function with one argument. Under the hood, if invoked, resolve will change the promise's status from pending to fulfilled, and the promise's resolved value will be set to the argument passed into resolve. Reject is a function that takes a reason or error as an argument. Under the hood, if invoked, 
reject will change the promise's status from pending to rejected, and the promise's rejection reason will be set to the argument passed into reject. Let's look at an example executor function in a promise constructor. Const executor function equals resolve reject fat arrow function. It opens up a conditional with an if. The if has some condition in it, and in its body it says resolve. And in the resolve parentheses, there is I resolved. There's an else to this as well, and it has a reject. And in the reject parentheses, it says I rejected. At the end, const my first promise equals new promise with the executor function put into the promise. Let's break down what's happening above. We declare a variable my first promise. My first promise is constructed using new promise, which is the promise constructor method. Executor function is passed to the constructor and has two functions as parameters, resolve and reject. If some condition evaluates to true, we invoke resolve with the string I resolved. If not, we invoke reject with the string I rejected. In our example, my first promise resolves or rejects based on a simple condition, but in practice, promises settle based on the result of asynchronous operations. For example, a database request may fulfill with the data from a query or reject with an error thrown. In this exercise, we'll construct promises and resolve synchronously to more easily understand how they work. Instructions. One, you'll be writing your code in the code editor, but we won't be running it until the final step. To check your code for a step, you can press the check work button. And we can see that in the bottom right here. We're going to create a promise representing ordering sunglasses from an online store. First, create this function, my executor. Later on, you'll pass this function into the promise constructor. My executor should, have two parameters, resolve and reject. Okay, so let's make a const called my executor, and it takes resolve, the full word, right? Yes, resolve, comma, reject. Then we'll do our fat arrow and open this up. Check if the sunglasses property on the inventory object has a value greater than zero. Okay, so if inventory dot sun glasses all undercase and is greater than zero. Okay, so if they have any inventory of sunglasses, if it does, my executor should invoke resolve with the string sunglasses order processed. Okay, I'll copy that string. And then we want to write resolve and open up that and put that string in there. And the next one is if it does not, my executor should invoke reject with the string that item is sold out. So let's grab that. Else reject. I already had the quotes, there we go. That item is sold out. When you're ready, press the check work button. Okay, check work. That worked, great, we'll go to the next one. Create a function, order sunglasses. This function should have no parameters. It should return a new promise constructed by passing your my executor function into the promise constructor. All right, so they want a function. Let's do another fat arrow function. So const order sunglasses is the name of it. That will equal, just invoke it with nothing in there. They said pass no parameters and it needs to return, uh, return a new promise. And then we need to pass in to the my executor. I keep on calling that executor. Um, executor, here we go. 
And let's see if that's what they wanted with uh, check work here. That's it. Create a variable order promise assigned to the returned value of your order sunglasses function. Okay, so we will make a const order promise. And that is going to equal order sunglasses invoked. I think that's what they're asking for there. Let's try checking that work. That worked, okay. Number four, at the bottom of your app.js file, log order promise to the console. Console.log, and we just need to put that in there. Let's check the work, great. In this exercise and throughout the lesson, we'll provide you with a bash terminal to execute your code. To run the app.js program, you'll type node app.js in the terminal and hit enter or return. You'll be able to see the output of the program in the terminal. Let's try it. Type node app.js in the terminal and hit enter. Node app.js, enter. I see a promise and inside the object is sunglasses order processed. If you'd like, you can see an alternate output by changing the sunglasses property in the inventory object to zero and executing app.js from the terminal again. When you're ready to move on, press check work. Okay, let's do that last one. And we wanted sunglasses to now be zero and then check work again. Okay, we look good there. Let's move on to the next lesson. The node set timeout function. Knowing how to construct a promise is useful, but most of the time knowing how to consume or use promises will be key. Rather than constructing promises, you'll be handling promise objects returned to you as the result of an asynchronous operation. These promises will start off pending, but settle eventually. Moving forward, we'll be simulating this by providing you with functions that return promises, which settle after some time. To accomplish this, we'll be using setTimeout. SetTimeout is a node API, parentheses, a comparable API is provided by web browsers, that uses callback functions to schedule tasks to be performed after a delay. Set timeout has two parameters, a callback function and a delay in milliseconds. Const delayed hello equals an empty fat arrow function and the body of it has a console.log saying, hi, this is an asynchronous greeting and a set timeout below it taking in delayed hello and 2000 milliseconds. Here we invoke set timeout with the callback function delayed hello and 2000. In at least two seconds, delayed hello will be invoked. But why is it at least two seconds and not exactly two seconds? This delay is performed asynchronously. The rest of our program won't stop executing during the delay. Asynchronous JavaScript uses something called the event loop. After two seconds, delayed hello is added to a line of code waiting to be run. Before it can run, any synchronous code from the program will run. Next, any code in front of it in the line will run. This means it might be more than two seconds before delayed hello is actually executed. Let's look at how we'll be using set timeout to construct asynchronous promises. Const return promise function equals a fat arrow function and in the body there is return new promise. Resolve reject are the arguments. It's a fat arrow again and the body of that is set timeout. The resolve is I resolved and there is 1000 milliseconds passed into that. Then we have const prom equals return promise function. In the example code we invoke return promise function which returned a promise. We assign that promise to the variable prom. Similar to asynchronous promises you may encounter in production, prom will initially have a status of pending. Let's explore set timeout a bit more. Instructions. One, create a function using STO. Your using STO function should have no parameters. Inside the function body, 
it should print a string to the console. This can be any string you want as long as it's not either this is the first line of synchronous code or this is the last line of synchronous code. Check your work to move on to the next step. Okay, so we're supposed to write our code below this it says and we need to create a function using sto and here's our fat arrow function and the body just needs to console.log anything we want. I'm going to write async code here. Say, so imagine this is where we'll do our async code. Let's check that out. No, that's wrong. Oh, uh, that's a STNO or all capital. So that's on me. There we go. Number two. And now let's invoke the setTimeout function. Remember, setTimeout has two parameters. Invoke setTimeout with your using sto function as the first argument, and a number between a zero and 3,000 as the second argument. So we'll use that set time, timeout. And let's see exactly how it works. Okay, I'm doing this improperly because we already have the function. I didn't think of that. Okay, so we already have the function here. We just need to pass them in. Uh, so using STO, and we know that we can't invoke it, and then we'll comma with 1000, and that's going to be uh, what I think we have to do here. Let's check that out. Yep, that's it. Three, take a moment to predict the output of this program. Whenever you're ready, type node app.js in the terminal and hit enter. See if the program's output in the terminal lines up with what you expected. Well, I expect this to be the last piece that is executed because it has a thousand milliseconds, so it's going to wait here. And uh, yeah, that's going to be my guess. Let's check the work. Oh, I didn't run the node.js command. So uh, that was node app.js. This is the first line of code in app.js. This is the last line of code in app.js. So it didn't run at all, but then again, it wasn't called anywhere. Uh, so it shouldn't really run. Okay, let's go to the next lesson. Consuming promises. The initial state of an asynchronous promise is pending, but we have a guarantee that it will settle. How do we tell the computer what should happen then? Promise objects come with an aptly named dot then method. It allows us to say, I have a promise when it settles, then here's what I want to happen. In the case of our dishwasher promise, the dishwasher will run then. If our promise rejects, this means we have dirty dishes and we'll add soap and run the dishwasher again. If our promise fulfills, this means we have clean dishes and we'll put the dishes away. Dot then is a higher order function. It takes two callback functions as arguments. We refer to these callbacks as handlers. When the promise settles, the appropriate handler will be invoked with that settled value. The first handler, sometimes called onFulfilled, is a success handler, and it should contain the logic for the promise resolving. The second handler, sometimes called onRejected, is a failure handler, and it should contain the logic for the promise rejecting. We can invoke dot then with one, both, or neither handler. This allows for flexibility, but it can also make it for tricky debugging. If the appropriate handler is not provided, instead of throwing an error, dot then will just return a promise with the same settled value as the promise it was called on. One important feature of dot then is that it always returns a promise. We'll return to this in more detail in a later exercise and explore why that's so important. And we can move on to the next lesson. To handle a successful promise or a promise that resolved, we invoke dot then on the promise, 
passing in a success handler callback function. Const prom equals new promise. Resolve and reject are the arguments. We fat arrow to resolve containing yay. Const handle success equals resolved value as an argument. We fat arrow to console.log resolve the value. Prom dot then handle success prints yay. Let's break down what's happening in the example code. Prom is a promise which will resolve to yay. We define a function handle success which prints the argument passed to it. We invoke proms.then function passing in our handle success function. Since prom resolves, handle success is invoked with proms resolve value. Yay, so yay is logged to the console. With typical promise consumption, we won't know whether a promise will resolve or reject, so we'll need to provide the logic for either case. We can pass both an unfulfilled and unrejected callback to dot then. Let prom equal new promise, resolve and reject are the arguments. The fat arrow function points to let num equal math.random. If num is less than 0.5, resolve with yay, else reject with oh no. Const handle success equals resolve the value, and that prints out resolve the value. Const handle failure equals rejection reason, and that prints out rejection reason. Prom dot then handle success comma handle failure. Let's break down what's happening in the example code. Prom is a promise, which will randomly either resolve with yay or reject with oh no. We pass two handler functions to dot then. The first will be invoked with yay if the promise resolves, and the second will be invoked with oh no if the promise rejects. Let's write some unfulfilled and unrejected functions. Instructions. One, take a look at the provided code. We require in a function check inventory. It builds on the logic of the order sunglasses function you wrote in a previous exercise. Check inventory takes in an array representing an order and returns a promise. If every item in the order is in stock, that promise resolves with the value, thank you, your order was successful. Otherwise, the promise rejects with the value, we're sorry, your order could not be completed because some items are sold out. We used set timeout to ensure that the check inventory promise settles asynchronously. If you'd like, look at the library.js file to see how it works. Press check work when you're ready to move on. Um, we could look at that library file real quick. That's this right here. Oh, okay, so the check inventory is going to take an order. It's going to build a promise and it has a set time out right here. It's going to let in stock equal order.every. So it'll go through every order and compare them. Um, and then if in stock, resolve thank you, your order was successful or else reject it with the rejected statement and wait one second for this to happen. Then module.exports, check inventory, and that's what we're bringing in. Okay, great, let's check work. Write a function handle success. You'll use this function later on as your success handler. Handle success should have one parameter representing a resolved value. Inside the body of handle success, log the parameter to the console. Okay, so we're going to have a cons called handle success. And there was one parameter in here. It'll just be res, it'll represent the resolved value. And inside the body, we need to console.log the parameter res. Let's check that work. That looks good. On to number three. Write a function handle failure. You'll use this function later on as your failure handler. Handle failure should have one parameter representing a rejection reason. Inside the body of handle failure, log the parameter to the console. Okay, 
So we'll have a const named handle failure. And that will have, uh, we could call it rej for reject. And console.log rj. Check that work. Good, let's go to number four. Invoke check inventory with order. This will return a promise. Attach a dot then function to this. Pass into dot then the two handlers you wrote as callback functions. Okay, we need to invoke check inventory. So check inventory. We're going to invoke that with order. That's right up here. Okay, so we invoke with order passed in here. And then we want to chain a dot then to that. And inside our dot then, we will put our handle success, comma, handle failure. And let's see if we did that properly. Check work. Oh, you know, I'm doing this slightly improperly. This, uh, we should do the check inventory like so. And then the dot then should come after this. Okay, so that's what we're waiting for there. Okay, that was a mistake. Let's check the work. Yes, that's right. Type node app.js in the terminal and hit enter. Node app.js. Thank you, your order was successful. Let's check that work. We are good to move on to the next lesson. Using catch with promises. One way to write cleaner code is to follow a principle called separation of concerns. Separation of concerns means organizing code into distinct sections, each handling a specific task. It enables us to quickly navigate our code and know where to look if something isn't working. Remember, dot then will return a promise with the same settled value as the promise it was called on if no appropriate handler was provided. This implementation allows us to separate our resolved logic from our rejected logic. Instead of passing both handlers into one dot then, we can chain a second dot then with a failure handler to the first dot then with a success handler, and both cases will be handled. Let's see that in action, because that was a difficult sentence there. Okay, so it has prom.then, resolve the value, and a fat hour function at console.logs resolve the value. And after that, there's another dot then, it takes null, comma, rejection reason. And that fat hour functions to a console.log of rejection reason. Okay. Since JavaScript doesn't mind white space, we follow a common convention of putting each part of this chain in a new line to make it easier to read. To create even more readable code, we can use a different promise function, .catch. The .catch function takes only one argument, onRejected. In the case of a rejected promise, this failure handler will be invoked with the reason for rejection. Using dot .catch accomplishes the same thing as using a dot .then with only a failure handler. Let's look at an example using dot .catch. Prom dot .then resolved value, a fat arrow function to console.log resolved value. After that is a dot .catch. Rejection reason, fat arrow function, console.log the rejection reason. Let's break down what's happening in the example code. Prom is a promise which randomly either resolves with yay or rejects with oh no. We pass a success handler to dot then and a failure handler to dot catch. If the promise resolves, dot then's success handler will be invoked with yay. If the promise rejects, dot then will return a promise with the same rejection reason as the original promise and dot catch's failure handler will be invoked with that rejection reason. Let's practice writing dot catch functions. One, we're going to refactor the functionality of the previous exercise, but this time we'll use dot catch. First, invoke the check inventory function with the order. Remember this function will return a promise. We'll write your code below here. 
So they want us to invoke check inventory and put in order. And that looks like they that's all they want us to do so far. Let's just do that. Okay. Two, add a dot then to the returned promise, pass in the success handler, handle success. Okay, so we want a dot then and then handle success. And we could check that work. Great. Add a dot catch to the returned promise. Pass in the failure handler, handle failure. Okay, so dot catch handle failure. And let's check that work. That works. Number four. We set our inventory of sunglasses to zero. So the order shouldn't go through. Let's make sure our code has the expected results. Type node app.js in the terminal and hit enter. So node app dot js enter we're sorry your order could not be completed because some items were sold out let's check that work we are good to go on to the next lesson chaining multiple promises one common pattern we'll see with asynchronous programming is multiple operations which depend on each other to execute or that must be executed in a certain order we might make one request to a database and use the data returned to us to make another request and so on. Let's illustrate this with another cleaning example, washing clothes. We take our dirty clothes and put them in the washing machine. If the clothes are cleaned, then we'll want to put them in the dryer. After the dryer runs, if the clothes are dry, then we can fold them and put them away. This process of chaining promises together is called composition. Promises are designed with composition in mind. Here's a simple promise chain in code. Okay, here is the promise chain. First promise function, dot then, first resolve val and a fat arrow function return. Second promise function is invoked and inside of there is first resolved val. Now after all of this is dot then, second resolved val a fat arrow and console.log second resolve val let's break down what's happening in the example we invoke a function first promise function which returns a promise we invoke dot then with an anonymous function as the success handler inside the success handler we return a new promise the result of invoking a second function, second promise function, with the first promise's resolved value. We invoke a second dot then to handle the logic for the second promise settling. Inside that dot then, we have a success handler, which will log the second promise's resolved value to the console. In order for our chain to work properly, we had to return the promise, second promise function, first resolve val. This ensured that the return value of the first dot then was our second promise rather than the default return of a new promise with the same settled value as the initial. Let's write some promise chains. Instructions. Take a look at the provided code. We require in three functions, check inventory, process payment, ship order. These functions each return a promise. Check inventory expects an order argument and returns a promise. If there are enough items in stock to fill the order, the promise will resolve to an array. The first element in the resolved value array will be the same order and the second element will be the total cost of the order as a number. Process payment expects an array argument with the order as the first element and the purchase total as the second. This function returns a promise. If there is a large enough balance on the gift card associated with the order, it will resolve to an array. The first element in the resolved value array will be the same order and the second element will be a tracking number. 
Ship order expects an array argument with the order as the first element and a tracking number as the second. It returns a promise which resolves to a string confirming the order has shipped. If you'd like, look at the library.js file to see how these functions work. Press check work when you're ready to move on to the next checkpoint. Okay, let's check work. Two. We set up a promise chain, but it's missing a couple important lines of code to make it function properly. We invoked check inventory with order and chained a dot then function to it. This dot then has an anonymous function as its success handler, but it's missing a return statement. The success handler should return a process payment promise. All right, let's do our return here. So return and it was process payment. And let's try that out. I see we need to pass in that value. So that process payment, what was that? Okay, respect, it expects an array argument with the order as the first element and the, okay, and this returns um, the same order and the second element will be the total cost. And that's what it wants is the second thing I imagine. Okay, so we're going to pass in just the resolved value array right into here. That's what they're asking for, I'm pretty sure. Let's take a look. Yeah, that does that. Let's move on to number three. We have a second dot then function on the chain. This dot then also has an anonymous function as its success handler and is missing a return statement. The success handler should return a ship order promise. Okay, so this is the second dot then. We want to return a ship order. Now ship order is most likely going to take in this resolved value array. So we could push that right in there and give that a shot. That works. Type node app.js in the terminal and hit enter. Node app.js, enter. All of the items are in stock. The total cost of the order is $35.97. The payment processed with gift card, generating shipping label. The order has been shipped. The tracking number is 727157. Let's check the work and move on to the next lesson. Avoiding common mistakes. Promise composition allows for much more readable code than the nested callback syntax that preceded it. However, it can still be easy to make mistakes. In this exercise, we'll go over two common mistakes with promise composition. Mistake one. Nesting promises instead of chaining them. Returns, promise, returns first promise dot then first resolve. Okay, what, what they're trying to show is that we're putting dot then dot then and this is getting bigger and bigger. Let's, let's break down what's happening above here. Okay, we invoke returns first promise which returns a promise. We invoke dot then with a success handler. Inside the success handler, we invoke returns second value with first resolve val, which will return a new promise. We invoke a second dot then to handle the logic for the second promise settling all inside the first dot then. Inside that second dot then, we have a success handler, which will log the second promise's resolve value to the console. Instead of having a clean chain of promises, we've nested the logic for one inside the logic of the other. Imagine if we were handling five or 10 promises. Mistake two, forgetting to return a promise. Let's break down what's happening in this example where we have the console.log here, okay? We invoke returns first promise, which returns a promise. Then we invoke dot then with a success handler. Inside the success handler, we create our second promise, but we forget to return it. We invoke a second dot then. It's supposed to handle the logic for the second promise. But since we didn't return, this dot then is invoked on a promise with the same settled value as the original promise. 
Since forgetting to return our promise won't throw an error, this can be a really tricky thing to debug. Instructions. The code in app.js works correctly, but it doesn't follow best practices. Type node app.js in the terminal and hit enter so you can see what the program outputs. Node app.js enter. And this is exactly what we saw last time. And I guess we could just press check work to move on. Okay. Two, refactor or rewrite the code to avoid the two common mistakes, nesting and forgetting to return properly. So this one doesn't really return in any place. You just, uh, it's the nesting that it's doing that's letting everything happen. So, all right, let's work on it. Where does this end? This ends at the end where it really should be ending right here. And we need to return this right here. So this next dot then should be pinned onto the end of this. So that dot then is over and this dot then should start. Now this next one, uh, we're going to need to return this again, return. And we have the pointing function. This ends at the end, that's not what we want. We want to wrap everything that we did up to the dot then and take out that dot then as well. And then this would come here. And I don't think we need to return the console log, so that one should work pretty much properly. Um, and it's closed right there. And now these guys do nothing. All right, let me see if I understood that correctly. It's kind of hard to look at without like a nice prettier extension or something to make it look nice for you. But let's see if uh, let's see if that works. Yeah, that's what they wanted. Okay, great. We refactored that to look a little a little better looking for sure. Three, type node app.js in the terminal and hit enter. Make sure your program is still working as expected. Okay, node app.js. Yes, that is working as expected. Let's check that work and go to the next lesson. Using promise.all. When done correctly, promise composition is a great way to handle situations where asynchronous operations depend on each other or execution order matters. What if we're dealing with multiple promises, but we don't care about the order? Let's think in terms of cleaning again. For us to consider our house clean, we need our clothes to dry, our trash bins emptied, and the dishwasher to run. We need all of these tasks to complete, but not in any particular order. Furthermore, since they're all getting done asynchronously, they should really all be happening at the same time. To maximize efficiency, we should use concurrency, multiple asynchronous operations happening together. With promises, we can do this with the function promise.all. Promise.all accepts an array of promises as its argument and returns a single promise. That single promise will settle in one of two ways. If every promise in the argument array resolves, the single promise returned from promise.all will resolve with an array containing the resolve value from each promise in the argument array. If any promise from the argument array rejects, the single promise returned from promise.all will immediately reject with the reason that promise rejected. This behavior is sometimes referred to as failing fast. Let's look at the code example. Let my promises equal promise.all and inside of promise.all, there is an array. The array contains returns prom one invoked, returns prom two invoked, returns prom three invoked, and the array ends and the function closes. My promises dot then array of values, fat arrow function console dot log array of values, dot catch rejection reason, fat arrow function console dot log rejection reason. Let's break down what's happening. 
we declare my promises assigned to invoking promise.all. We invoke promise.all with an array of three promises, the returned values from functions. We invoke dot then with a success handler, which will print the array of resolved values if each promise resolves successfully. We invoke dot catch with a failure handler, which will print the first rejection message if any promise rejects. Instructions. One. Our business is doing so well that we're running low on inventory. We want to reach out to some distributors to see if they have the items we need. We only want to make one restocking order, so we'll only want to place the order if all of the items are available. Take a look at the provided code. We require in one function, check availability. Check availability expects two string arguments, an item and a distributor. It returns a promise. The function simulates checking that the given distributor has the given item. 80% of the time, it will resolve the promise with the item, and 20% of the time, it will reject the promise with an error message, stating that the item isn't available. We also provided two functions that will serve as success and failure handlers. If you'd like, look at the library.js file to see how these functions work. Press check work when you're ready to move on to the next checkpoint. All right, let's check work, see what we have to do here. Two, create three variables, each assigned to a separate promise. Check sunglasses should be assigned the value returned by invoking check availability with sunglasses as its first argument and favorite supply co as its second argument. Okay, so let's do that. I have a const called check sunglasses. That's going to equal check availability. availability. And we will invoke that with two different strings. One will be sunglasses. And now the next one will be, uh, this is favorite supply co. Just going to copy that in. I don't want to typo anything about it. Favorite supply co. Okay. The next is check pants. Okay. So const check pants equals check availability again, just with different strings. Okay. So let's pop this in here. We have check availability and the strings are going to be pants and Favorite supply co again. Okay, so same company there. Now we need one more and it's called check bags. I'm just going to take it right from here. Check bags. And it should have bags and favorite supply co again. Okay, so it's going to be favorite supply co each time. Great, let's uh, check that work. That's good. Three. Invoke promise.all with an array containing check sunglasses, check pants, and check bags. Okay, so we saw that like promise.all, and then inside there we saw an array and it had each one of these in there. So you'd have check sunglasses, then you'd comma to check pants, and then you'd comma to check bags and if I remember correctly, they're all invoked in here. So invoke them all and let's check that work. Nope, that's not it. It's likely a syntax error. I'm going to guess that it's not typo or anything. It's just uh, probably not invoked. Uh, check work. Yep, that's it. Don't invoke these in promise.all. Number four, chain a dot then to the promise returned from promise.all. You should pass in on fulfill to serve as the success handler. Okay, so right here we write dot then, and inside of here, on fulfill is what we want to pass in as the success handler. So that should be enough. Let's check the work. Five, add a catch to the chain. You should pass in on reject to serve as the failure handler. 
Okay, so that should be a dot catch on reject. That works. Number six, type node app.js in the terminal and hit enter to execute your program. And we could see checking availabilities everywhere. Sunglasses are in stock, pants are in stock. Oh no, bags are unavailable at this time. Let's check that work and go to the next lesson. Review, awesome job. Promises are a difficult concept even for experienced developers, so pat yourself on the back. You've learned a ton about asynchronous JavaScript and promises. Let's review. Promises are JavaScript objects that represent the eventual result of an asynchronous operation. Promises can be in one of three states, pending, resolved, or rejected. A promise is settled if it is either resolved or rejected. We construct a promise by using the new keyword and passing an executor function to the promise constructor method. Set timeout is a node function which delays the execution of a callback function using the event loop. We use dot then with a success handler callback containing the logic for what should happen if a promise resolves. We use dot catch with a failure handler callback containing the logic for what should happen if a promise rejects. Promise composition enables us to write complex asynchronous code that's still readable. We do this by chaining multiple dot thens and dot catches. To use promise composition correctly, we have to remember to return promises constructed within a dot then. We should chain multiple promises rather than nesting them. To take advantage of concurrency, we can use promise.all. Let's see what's up next. Async await. 